So I want to welcome everybody for coming out today. Um, it's been a great weekend here, alumni weekend at the University of Chicago. My name is Alex Goldenberg. I'm an alumni class of 2006, and I've been a supporter of the campaign to bring a trauma center to the University of Chicago since it started. I believe that the University of Chicago and President Zimmer need to open a trauma center because it would show that they value black life, the life of the neighborhoods that surround them. For too long, they've been neglecting the needs of the surrounding community, and we feel that it's time that they change that. They have a unique opportunity to save lives. This is a gun violence epidemic in the neighborhoods surrounding them, and they have the most resource-rich hospital and a responsibility to do something about that issue, about those lives being lost, and do something for the people that are dying at their door, literally. So alumni, including myself, have come together and we've decided that we're going to show President Zimmer the thing, one thing that he really understands, um, and that's the pocketbook. We're going to stop giving money to the university until they open up a trauma center. To date, we have uh, put together $1,000 as an initial offering. This $1,000 is money that we would have given to the university on this weekend, but instead we've decided to give it to the campaign to bring a trauma center to the south side of Chicago. So without further ado, I'd like to present this check to one of the leaders of the Trauma Care Coalition, Veronica Morris-Moore, on behalf of the Alumni Committee for a Trauma Center. We'd like to present you this $1,000 check. On behalf of the Trauma Care Coalition, I would like to thank the alumni for supporting this campaign and also for taking a stand for justice. Um, as Alex stated before, there's a lot of black youth that are losing their lives and we feel like there's things that can be done. We encourage alumni to continue to rally with us and continue to support us and continue to ask that President Zimmer and Dean Polanski do something and make good on their promise to be a regional solution to trauma care soon because it's a hot summer already and we don't want to see any more lives lost on the south side unnecessarily. So once again, we thank the alumni association that support the, those in the alumni that do support the trauma center campaign and we also like to thank the students in the community abroad that support the trauma center campaign and our efforts to bring one on the south side at the university of chicago thank you My name is Emilio Come del Junco. I'm a current student at the University of Chicago. Um, it's really inspiring to see alumni join with students and community members to call for a trauma center on the south side and to tell the university that need, they need to step up and do what's right for the rest of the city. As students and as alumni, there are a lot of things that are done in our name by the university. They like to defend their actions by saying that it's in the best interests of students and that it's what the alumni that give them money and that fund the university want them to do. And as students, we have been telling them that that's not the case, that we are putting our foots down and we are saying that you cannot do this in our names. And it's so heartening to see that alumni are doing the same thing and are saying that this is not what we want to be done with our money, that this is not the kind of university that we want to see, that we want to see a university that is committed to addressing health inequities, that's committed to ending racist disparities in the way that healthcare is given um, out on the south side. And so I'd like to applaud the Alumni Association for joining in this struggle. You always got to put the mic down for me. <laughs> Hi, my name is Duff Morton. I graduated from the University of Chicago School of Social Work, the School of Social Service Administration, in 2010. I was proud to do that. And I'm just as proud to be here right now because I think that being here is being true to the best of what this university is about. And the best of what this university is about is changing the world through your mind and your body. Now I'm going to tell you about the body a little bit. When I first came here, I remember seeing a t-shirt that said, bleed maroon. And I thought, what does that mean? You know, blood isn't really maroon. Or if it is, like, my blood isn't really maroon. And you know, this university doesn't even have a football team, really. Like, what, what does it mean to bleed maroon? And I'll tell you a little bit about how I discovered what it meant to bleed maroon. Um, I discovered that it was something that was really repressed here because this is a university that likes to think of itself 
as being a place for the mind, for the mind and not necessarily for the body. And that's a problem, right? That's a problem it's that we overcome in a lot of ways. We overcome it yesterday when there was a beer garden. I was very pleased to see that the university managed to overcome its, its mind orientation enough to get us drunk for free. Um, but it's a problem that manifests itself in deeper ways than the lack of alcohol on campus. So if you live in the mind, that means you don't live in a place. You just live somewhere out in the universe. And yet, we do live in a place. This university is in a place that is in the middle of an epidemic, an epidemic of gun violence. And that epidemic of gun violence costs hundreds of lives each year. Now, if our university and our hospital were in the middle of a country that was having a malarial epidemic, and if our hospital said, we're sorry, we don't want to treat malaria cases because it's not our academic interest, that would be a disgrace. If our hospital in 1982 had been in New York City, in Manhattan, watching the first cases of AIDS emerge. And if our hospital had said, we're sorry, we're not interested in discovering new treatments for AIDS because that's not what strikes our academic curiosity, that would have been a disgrace. And today, our hospital is in the middle of an epidemic on the south side of Chicago and is saying, we're sorry, we're not interested in dealing with this epidemic because it's not academically provoking to us. And that is a disgrace. It's a disgrace because it means thinking of the mind as if the mind were totally separate from the body. And it's not. Not only is the mind not separate from the body, but the stones where we learn are not separate from the neighborhood in which they lie. We have a unique opportunity to be true to our mission, to be true to the place where we are, to look to the needs that we uniquely can fulfill because of where we're located. Right now, we're failing that mission. I was thinking about that failure, and it struck me that there was something I hadn't understood about what it means to bleed maroon. You know what maroon is? I'll tell you what maroon blood is. It's blood that's red with a little bit of blue in it. Well, I'm here to tell you that this university should be for more than the blue bloods, that the blue blood should matter just as much as the red blood, that the blood three blocks south of here should matter just as much as our blood. And if we can be true to that, then we'll have left something good, not just for the mind, but for everyone. Mm. All right. Um, you. So we're done. No um, do you have yeah, any deep-pocketed alumni who are uh, supporting this effort? I can take it. Um, yes, we do. We have um, several physicians um, who have supported the effort, and they're recruiting others to, to join. You've been at this for a long time. What's it going to take to uh, to get this to change? It's good. Do you want to ask? I can take it. I mean, I think it's going to take a broad coalition, which is what we're building and we're showing. Um, this alumni group has just came together, and we think that them working in coalition with the faith group that's coming together, with the nurses union, with the doctors, with the students and the community, um, is going to be a force that the university will have to reckon with. And what is it going to take to make this actually happen? The university, the 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 coalition once it once it's formed and, and continues to grow, has to be able to convince. And we also need our elected officials to convince President Zimmer and Dean Polanski to convince the board of this institution to create a level one trauma center. It's really about the heads of this hospital. In order to be a level one trauma center, a hospital has to make an application to do so. So they have to want to. Right now, for the past four years, the university has not wanted to. So we need people that are going to apply pressure on them to realize that this is not something that's just can basically rest on whether or not the university wants to because the community needs it desperately. And you've got a tie-in with the latest fundraising campaign of the university and uh, in this effort? Yeah, the university's main um, response to anybody that asks them about this is that they do not have the money. Um, if they had the money or if they have resources that they do have, they will have to take from it and cut back. But the university is or is raising money is it 4.5 billion right. is their capital campaign so it only takes about 20 to 60 million to actually fund a trauma center um president zimmer makes three million alone by himself so we're saying that you know 
if alumni are donating to this hospital and alumni are asking for a trauma center, all this money that they're asking people for, they should be doing some things that people are asking them to do with it. Our concern is basically that the University of Chicago, like I said, do things that the community needs before it's, you know, what the university wants. And they want this Obama library. And it's going to take a lot of resources and a lot of manpower put towards getting it here and then building it and all the other things. And we need a trauma center. We also need the Obama library. It will bring jobs. It will bring resources. And we want it on the south side, too. But we do not feel like the University of Chicago has a right to continue to re to make requests for things that come with such prestige and honor, but then keep overlooking the need for trauma care that is three blocks away from them. It's people who stand on this campus that need trauma care, and they're ignoring that need. But yet, they want the Obama Library, and we feel like their priorities aren't right. And so. We're not going to take it anymore, and we urged in Barack Obama. We wrote a letter to him in which we attempted to drop off when he was here uh, two weeks ago. Um, but we are encouraging him to think about the fact that the University of Chicago does not have a trauma center, and people who may come to this campus to visit that library could possibly need a trauma center as well. So we feel like if they want that library, they need to be a well-rounded institution that shows its direct concern for black life before they receive it. I would add that as a result of the Week of Action, we've recruited a lot more allies. The latest uh, to endorse the campaign was Paul Farmer, uh, the founder of Partners in Health. Um, so he endorsed the campaign at an alumni health and human rights event uh, two nights ago. Um, and so, you know, more and more people are coming out of the woodwork to support, and it's a result of this important work that we're doing mm -hmm. um, every day. Hi, thank right. you. Oh. Let's take it. Teamwork. Ah. Ah.